All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Blurred Lines. I'm your host, G, and joining me tonight, we have none other than Nate himself. Nate, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. What's up, world? This is Nate, a.k.a. G Signature, and just wanted to come in and contribute my thoughts and discussion. Awesome, awesome. So before I begin, you know, as always, you guys saw it in the uh, opening you know, follow us uh, at Blurred Lines. That's on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Join the Facebook group. Uh, the community's growing. As you can see, we've already dropped some other videos, including uh, the greatest comic book movie bracket featuring Two Gonna Be White. So make sure you check that out. And of course, we got some more content on the way. But this episode is going to be a little bit more on the serious side. Uh, with, you know, this being Blurred Lines, the, the purpose I had was for our culture to be heard um especially through a black voice you know and initially yes it was about you know talking about comic book movies talking about movies in general music tv sports but we also got to talk about real life too we got to talk about what's going on right now in our country um of course being a black man it's no secret how what our relationship is to the police it's never it's never been on the best footing we've never felt as if we've always the police has always had our back and it's scary and what i'm uh alluding to is what's going on well initially what happened in minneapolis um with george floyd and his murder um by a police officer for a simple um forgery arrest you know e accusation of forgery let me be clear accusation of forgery arrest that resulted in his death and not only how the city of minneapolis is reacting but how the entire country is reacting over the course of the week we've seen riots in minneapolis and then we see riots in New York and Atlanta and what you see is that the country is hurting and this is something if you're in the black community this isn't new you know with the advent of internet yeah this may seem new but and I told Nate this earlier we've heard about this what five years ago with Ferguson you know with Trayvon Martin you know, with Sandra Bland, we've heard this. We've heard all the stories, all the instances where a black life was lost by the organization that is supposed to protect us. And it's scary. It's scary to think growing up how fortunate I was as a black man to not experience that yet. Because I don't know if I'll, if I'll experience it. And that's something I shouldn't have to sit with. Something I shouldn't have to think about in the back of my head. That, hey, I could be killed by the cops one day over nothing. Um, Nate, what are your thoughts? Um, this is the... Sometimes, in a weird way, we should be numb to this, which is unfortunate because this is nothing new in history, like you mentioned. Even in our lifetime, it's almost that, even though you see com black comedians joke about it, you always have to be wary of certain police officers and law enforcement and the system. Even if you haven't experienced them, you've had your favorite rap artists mention them, your favorite rap groups mention them, you've seen they alluded to it in, in movies. Um, when I think about the actual uh, George Floyd, and I saw the video, I actually saw it several times. And you're so used to seeing like, but what if you would have did this right? What if you did this right? What if you did this right? Well, make this different where this wasn't a judgment call. This wasn't like a judgment reaction. Like this was almost malicious. Um, I've always felt the need to be conscious, but now more than ever, the ability to act is strong. Um, 
I was disgusted by the video. I was angered by the video. Um, am I surprised? No. I am grateful, and I know you're going to probably get into this, that now we have probably more than ever in our lifetime, the assistance, the support from other cultures, other races. Yeah. Other no, countries. Yeah, no, you're you're right. And that, that support is huge. And while I'm talking, it looks like we got another person joining us. Uh, Matt will be joining us shortly to give his views and thoughts on this. But, I mean, it's it's scary, you know, just to just to see, you know, I can't feel safe when I go outside my own home. Hell, I can't feel safe in my own home. You know, that's that's what's scary about this whole thing. And, you know, I appreciate the support that we're getting from, you know, other cultures, other races, you know, celebrities are making, you know, making notice of all this. But what's crazy is, you know, will we see change is my question. Uh, we got Matt joining us. Matt, what's up, man? No. So uh, Nate gave his thoughts about what's going on in, with uh, the George Floyd situation and what's happening in Minneapolis. You want to go ahead and give yours? Um, I, I'm just tired. Thank you. Drew. Just yeah. tired. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how, I mean, Mary, I really wanted to ask you this. As you were someone who, who served in the military, so basically you was in a faction to help support our country. Like, how's that dynamic different for you and someone to serve your country, but at the same time, your country don't really want to serve you as a black man? Like, how do you, how's that, how does that affect you personally? It's, it's, it's like crazy because, like, um, I I dealt I dealt with like a few like racist people in my in my unit and stuff. Either way, it was black black on white or white, black on black. So it's it's crazy, cause um yeah, cause like I was saying like um it was a like it was a girl like in our unit, white girl, gone on leave. Somehow miraculously she came back and got an award. Well, but like I'm sitting here like. Like you, my supervisor, you black. Why you write me up for one? And but it's 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 crazy because like because like it's you can you can say stuff, but you got got to go through that chain of, chain of command and and whatnot, like heavily and everything. So you got to do the investigations and stuff and stuff like that and whatnot. Make sure your your point is actually being made. Cause um the last job I work at um I um I filed um like a plan against my supervisor and whatnot cause um she didn't she didn't want me there she didn't cause she was mad I got hired and not the guy she wanted right when I brought it up to their attention they pretty much just like took her like I guess she'd been there longer mm -hmm. I guess her dad was like some big top management level in their company too so mm -hmm. but the fun thing is as soon as i left she hired she hired a guy she wanted yeah so it's just yeah and, I don't, and, and greg I'm, go ahead i'm sorry man yeah like uh, I'm, i got i got it too with a couple of veteran guys uh, uh friends of mine and everything because um they keep saying well it's just the media doing this and this and this and this and whatnot but i'm saying like okay I'm black. I'm seeing this thing like every day. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to. I think I. I think y'all want to understand, but I don't want to understand. Right. And, and I, I and I agree with that. I think it's a thing where, you know, if it was white people that were getting murdered by the cops, yeah, you 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 would be up in arms about it too. But you're not I seeing mean, that. You're not seeing you you. Well, we're not seeing you know, Latino people being murdered by the cops. Granted, yeah, that does happen too. But we're not seeing Asians be murdered by the cops. We're seeing black people be murdered. It's not just one. It's not just two. I mean, you look at the Dylan Roofs, um, the guy who shot up the movie theater in Colorado. 
you know, the guy who shot up, the guys who shoots up schools, they don't get killed. They get arrested and they go through the due process uh, and go to go to court, but yet they can still breathe. But yet someone who's selling loose cigarettes or someone who's, you know, accused of forgery are no longer yeah, with they us. were accused. I mean, and I want to bring this up too. This week we could have had two black men dead. Because let's not forget about what happened in Central Park on that same day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we could have had was, two two black men dead nope. over Three. bullshit. Because the guy in Chelsea got um got think got got through the same thing too. Yeah. But please. I mean, it, it's crazy. And, you know, Matt, you do bring up a good point. I mean, those are just the stories we know. There's other stories that go on. There's other stories that happen that aren't reported about. Right. And if and I, don't, I don't want to speak out of turn, quote unquote, but um, mm-hmm. I do want to get this off my chest. For people, and I, I get it because, you know, the whole looting and everything, I'm not, I don't necessarily condone that. Because I has got kind of I don't want the message to get lost on the anger, but just think about a timeline of, in history. Every time that we as black people have tried to create a discussion, it has never been acknowledged. Right. Even the NAACP was founded by white people. That's why yep. they are halfway, you know, tolerated. Mm-hmm. When you think about the Black Panthers with Fred Hampton and Bobby Seale, and you see how their whole purpose was for things like this not to happen, to provide that restraint when you see police brutality. And then all they did was exercise their rights. They're armed, but say, hey, we're not going to use force unless you use force against us. And they still found a way to divide that and infiltrate and have the FBI, I think it was President Hoover, to actually basically say, yeah, go ahead and take them out, basically. Yeah. yeah. You know, because they were labeled a terrorist group for the FBI files. So we go from that, we go to civil rights, and we got the Martin Luther King and the protesting and the silence. We fast forward, and he still gets assassinated, by the way. Mm-hmm. And you see the Nation of Islam, they're coming across aggressive, but they're still a religious group. Like, look at this timeline of events where there's always a intimidation for just asking for decency. No, you're right. And um, I mean, I even think about, you know, do the right thing. You know, I, my fiance hadn't seen do the right thing. And we watched it a month ago. And it's scary. That movie was made over 30 years ago. But yet, what's happening in the movie is literally happening right now. Right. And it shows what we're, what we're seeing as society. You know, it's a powder keg that's honestly exploding right now because we're tired. You're right. I, I'm not sitting here condoning, you know, the riots and destroying, you know, property and things like that. But I get it. It's hard to control that anger. And sometimes when you pop, you have to pop somewhere. People just tired, man. Yeah. Tired. Um, Try to peaceful way, but. Yeah. Matt, I want to ask you how, you, you got boys, right? Yeah, I got two boys. How old are they? 11 and five. So your 11 year old, especially, have you had the talk with him? He, he's kind of autistic, so I really can't okay. have a talk with him yet. But yeah. he kind he kind of understands, but but um, but he don't like understand like command things type type like that. So. Yeah, no, no, I I understand that, but um, as as a one get to the, get you get to the confrontation, right? And they they don't understand that you don't understand, and they just mm-hmm. which has happened before. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's scary because um, I I have you know a kid that I mentor in the Big Brothers Big Sisters program, he, he's about 11 years old, 11, 12. And I had to have that talk with him yesterday. You know, and I just had to tell him, hey man, be careful. You know, and that's that's just, that's a sad thing when you have to have that talk. 
to tell a child, hey, trust the police, but be careful. Yeah. Because yeah, you, you know. can't trust the system. Right. And that's the problem. It's like, it's not just the police. That's the front lines mm -hmm. of the corruption. You still have to look at the prosecutors and the judges. Let's not I forget mean, the LA riots began after what four LAPD officers, even though it was clearly excessive force, got yeah. let go. And honestly, to be that the field liberation, liberation never really came peacefully. Let's be honest. It's always been no. instigated by chaos. Look right. up John Brown and that uprising back in history. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln didn't write the Emancipation Proclamation because it was the goodness of his heart. It's because yeah. there was so many uprisings. They had no choice but to acknowledge, like, if we don't stop this, this is always going to be a problem. They're tired of being slaves. Right, exactly. And, you know, you see that throughout history. You know, you look at things like, look at how we're treated compared to a lot of the other races. I mean, we had our own separate set of laws. Like, we were children. Jim Crow laws. You know, you watch a movie like Rosewood, and you watch what happened to that town. Yeah, I can't watch that movie. You, you hear about um, uh, Black Wall Street. And what happened there? If you haven't watched the first episode of Watchmen, I mean, now we're talking about this, but for years, this was not known. This was not known history. I mean, all those years I went to school, I would have never known about Rosewood if I didn't see it in John Singleton. You know, you get crazy. Race, racism. We know that the technical definition of racism. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, there are certain people that they, to them, it's a guilt trip. That's why they don't want to talk about racism. They bring out black on black crime. Right. And not only that, but it's like, and that's, let, let me address that. And I'm sure you all agree. That's never been a valid argument for police brutality. Mm -hmm. Because individuals killing each other, I'm not saying that's not an issue within our community. But when you're looking into a system that's literally designed and created to protect civilians, and I am a civilian of the United States of America, and I don't feel protected, where you see even now going on in these protests and these riots where these, these white friends are creating a barrier and the police are less likely to hit them than the black protesters. Well, no, uh, Nate, you bring, you bring up a great point. I mean, look at what happened when those white protesters because they wanted to go outside they wanted to go to the beach they wanted to get a haircut they wanted their malls open showed up to the state capitol with automatic weapons and were let right in hell given water given water and just in raleigh maybe two three weeks ago they were in a subway heavily armed mm -hmm. there was no tear gas there was no mace there was no police block i was just out in the protest it was very civil However, we saw a helicopter above us and we mm -hmm. saw police cars slowly gathering. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy, you know, the double standards that we see and... From, from what, when I see it for the Raleigh one, um, they say somebody started throwing stuff at the police. I don't know who. So, so if, I'm assuming it's outside people coming in and antagonizing stuff, trying to stir I mean, up stuff. I mean, that, I mean, that, that's a very valid point. That does happen. I mean, I saw a video where, honestly, it was white protesters who were the one being at, antag antagonizing and the ones that were going crazy. And I appreciate your support, but at the same time, that's not why we're here. You know, we're here to get a message across. We're here to, we're here to be angry. It's great you're here to be angry with us, but don't make it worse for us either. Also, but also don't get confused. Don't confuse the support either. There right. are some that are undercover cops yep. that are not for Black Lives Matter and they're mm -hmm. trying to frame the movement as well. There yes. are the people that have been caught so far doing that. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you're right. You definitely need to say that, hey, when we come in civil, unless they act civil against us, and then we have the right to respond and defend ourselves. Right. However, there are having people like that situation with the target. Mm -hmm. They have the footage where the two guys that started doing that had nothing to do with the protest. Yep. 
Yep. No, I saw that. Um, something I wanted to talk about too was where do you think we go from here now? Um, perfect example. Did you guys happen to see Killer Mike's speech from last night? Yes. Um, and you know, I got also that in a minute. I stuff we were quick. Okay. Um, but did you talk about like where he talked about you know where do we go from here? Mm-hmm. You know, and making sure we get the right people in office who can really make the change. I think that's so important. Um, we can't just sit there and blame, just blame the administration alone. It's the system. I think what you said earlier, Nate, it's the system. You know, we have to change the system. It's not just about putting people who look like us in there because that, that's not enough. We have to know how the game works. It was great. Yes, I love we had a black president, but it doesn't help if we have a black president and the opposing force outweighs him and what he can do. We need to know the system. It's not just about, oh, we need to put this person as president. Like, no, you need to vote for your state senators, your representatives, even um, your aldermen, your councilmen. We have to start putting them in. You, we, you vote for a district attorney. You know, you vote for sheriffs. It's start putting these people in office who can benefit us, not just, oh, I didn't really pay attention. Uh, This person's been sheriff for a long time. They can still be sheriff because we run into these things and we, and we sit there and say, oh, well, we need change. Change comes from all levels, not just from the top. And the truth be told, if you change enough in certain levels, you only have to worry about the top because they'll outnumber him. What are your thoughts on that, Nate? I agree with everything you said. There's not one answer to solve everything, of course. But yes, mm-hmm. um, when it comes to your vote matters, I always, I, not always, let me stop lying. Like many of us, we thought the presidential election was it. And second place was the local government. And as the older I get, the more I read these books. And I'll probably recommend some books to the, um, the show to start to mm-hmm. certain things we can read. Yeah, The local election is probably the most important. In all honesty, yeah. Okay. Um, number one, you're right. Vote, vote to see, make demands, and hold those officials accountable. Another thing too is we need to get organized, meaning that we have to take over a lot of our blocks, a lot of our streets. We have to become more financially literate. We have to be more mindful of the law in terms of gun laws as well. Let's arm ourselves and. I feel like if we create this boundary, we'll not be taken advantage of because it's too many times where we could be easily divided because we don't have any type of organization in our communities. So I think you should vote the right people in that's going to support us and hold them accountable when they don't because our vote does matter because when you have a huge black, brown, yellow population voting, we hold the power. Once we understand our power, we can get the right people in. Once we understand financial literacy, once we understand that we have to arm ourselves, once you understand that when it comes to the system, if we're less dependent on the system, but know the system, you can't really take advantage of us. Right. That was, that was good. What, what are your thoughts, Matt? Um, yeah, yeah, I agree with Nisi. You get the, get the right people in office who want to help us not not just get our votes i think that's that's been pretty much been the case the past few years yeah and everything right no it is my vote and not want to help us and secondly we need to empower ourselves um not saying everyone does this but i think a lot of times we look into these celebrities that's not their job to be role models to politicians oh i agree Malcolm X was not a celebrity. Malcolm X was not a celebrity. Martin Luther King was not a celebrity. You know, like the the biggest advocates, I think Dick Gregory, God rest his soul, even though he was a celebrity, one of the most realest things he said was, we never got liberated by the entertainer. Right. So stop looking for entertainers for liberation. You have the power. You know, yeah, it's, it's what? Oh, it's go ahead, Matt. Say something every time something goes on, first person they tag is Sean King. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I have my opinions on him, but 
like I said, like I, like I was saying, like, how can you trust a half breed? Well, it's not even that. It's, it's just more so of because technically Obama's a half breed, but um, yeah. it's not. It's not really about that. I'm just saying celebrities in general. I don't care what because you have you can have white allies. I just mentioned about Greg earlier about the whole John Brown story, right? You know. Yeah. Um, and John Brown was definitely a white boy, but when that white boy, he vouched for us. Like, he armed those slaves. Right. And then, back history. and then also, you know, we've had white allies who died during the Civil Rights Movement, mm-hmm. you know, He's who like, were killed uh, because they stood with us. So I don't think it's that, but Nate... And we had black because, opponents. Yeah, exactly. Now, Nate, I think to your point, though, I definitely agree with you that we shouldn't look for celebrities because... I mean, I think some of the things uh, me and Nate were talking about the last dance. uh, One of the things I didn't talk about with you was they went to a section where they talked about how Jordan has stayed kind of neutral in his stance for politics and why he doesn't, you know, get into the political ring. And for some sports fans, yeah, they may want their athletes to be political, to be that Muhammad Ali, to stand up for what they believe in. But you have folks that are like Jordan that says, hey, I just want to just play my game. Right. That's it. Yeah, and, just like something happens to you. Everybody looks for LeBron to see something like. Right. Wait, 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 LeBron to see something for him. Yeah. Um, I think it was uh, it was when Beto, Ro- Beto O'Rourke ran for, what was it, senator or governor of Texas? And – they were sitting there waiting on the Beyonce confirmation. Like, why are you waiting on a Beyonce confirmation to vote? It should be a bonus if they decide to speak. It shouldn't be man's yeah. story. Right. Especially nowadays with social media, we have our voices in our hands. We yeah. always we have the freedom to write our legislation, to write, to call and swarm these actual police officers. Like, hey, we're not leaving until we make sure our black brother or sister is okay, until they seek medical attention. We have to be the ones to understand, like, you know what? When I saw that video of George Floyd, I can't promise myself I'm going to sit there and record. I feel like we should all band together and say, nah, we're going to restrain. If you're going to take one of us, you got to take all of us. Until exactly. it's going to be a John Brown moment where they're going to sign an emancipation proclamation for mm-hmm. black people to get decency. Because at the end of the day, what's going to happen next grade, I can't tell you. But I know as we do have to instigate the situation to the point that they're going to at least change the vetting process of these officers. A lot yeah. of these officers, they can get on and be an officer fast and they could be a cosmetologist. How does that work? How does that make exactly. sense? We have such a huge responsibility. Yeah. I mean, you I look at the requirements of being a cop, you don't really have to do, you don't have to really do anything like, I mean, most of the time it's people who, it's people who can't get a job. Same thing with, with you know, being a prison guard. You know, there's not really a lot of requirements behind it. And that's scary. You know, I'm trusting this person to protect me and they don't have my best interests at heart. They have their own best interests. See, see now my wife went through more when she when she tried to be a dispatcher than, than, than what police go through. Yeah. She had to go through a lot of tech tests and all that. And see, that's crazy. But, but you know what this reminds me, not reminds me of, but you know what they try not to talk about that was really new history? What? When you think of the name Christopher Dorner, what do you think about? I heard the name before. I did hear the name before, too. Okay, so Christopher Dorner was that that black former LAPD officer that went on a manhunt years ago, back in 2013, I believe. Yeah. That he's tried to file a complaint because his, his fellow partner was using excessive force on an arrest. He said he filed a complaint, and he ended up getting punished, ended up getting fired. And that person he filed a complaint with, I believe, became a sheriff. So that's why he went on that manhunt because his fellow LAPD or former LAPD co-workers, even though he was trying to do the right thing and file a complaint on the mishandling of a suspect, he ended up getting fired for it. So he started killing, not saying they condonance, but he started killing family members of the LAPD, family members of the judges. And so it finally mm-hmm. came down, I think it was like two days, like a one or two day situation in LA. Until he finally, I think he, had like a, he died of a self-inflicted wound when he tried to tear gas, the house he kind of commandeered but he was in this big manhunt and he had did like a whole manifesto and like for how many warrants do you need i'm not saying that we should take that route but that might be the case because i know one of the biggest criticisms are why don't a lot of these good officers speak up maybe because they get punished they get reprimanded yeah. they're trying to speak up for them right no no and that, that's one thing i think people need to realize too is there are good cops out there um 
you know, even the cops, when I've dealt with over my lifetime, I've never dealt with a cop like, oh man, that cop was so bad. That cop was so nasty to me. You know, I've dealt with, I've dealt with good cops, black and white, honestly, ma- majority white that, you know, worked out with me who, you know, it was one time I, I ran a red light and I didn't have my insurance on me and I probably should have gotten a ticket, but I told the cop my situation and the cop was like, Hey, I understand you're trying to get to work. Don't worry about it. Take it. You know, in most cases, you probably got thrown in jail. <laughs> exactly. You know, I've gotten lucky and I know I've been fortunate because I know somewhere in another city that same thing's happening to another black guy and they get five squad cars behind them and getting the shit behind them. Right. Um, one thing I wanted to post to y'all too is, you know, looking at what we see in, in the media. You know, you, you hear about, I think, Matt, you brought it up, too, is people saying, oh, the media is making you portray this. But I don't buy that anymore because I don't have to look at CNN. Mm-hmm. Everyone has their phone out. Everyone is putting this on Twitter. They're putting it on Instagram. They're putting it on Snapchat. What's going on? What do you tell those folks then who, because don't get me wrong, I think, I mean, yeah, and I'll get into this in a second. I do think there are people not of color who want to support us but at the same time maybe are afraid to or maybe to your i think to your point nate are afraid of the repercussions what do you say to them if they want to be an ally i'll say to them that basically what one of the uh lead protesters said and that protest and rally was there earlier eventually they're going to come for you anyway if they oppress one they're going to press all Mm-hmm. I don't think because we're black is only going to be a black problem. This is a power struggle. We just end up being the symbolism of police brutality. Don't mm-hmm. get it twisted. Police can abuse their power of anyone. Yes. And my my notion is, what do I tell them? I say, look, this can either happen to you. And two, it's about establishment. You say it's all about your rights. You say it's all about America. It's, it's, it's unconstitutional for us to be in quarantine. That's what you're saying. It's unconstitutional to keep us inside. It's also unconstitutional for someone with a badge to play judge and a jury. I thought that's what the legal system was for. So unless you want to always be uncomfortable with racism, then stand with us and end it. This will be a whole coexistment if you just came and joined me in. We have This will always be a discussion unless you join us. That's why I would tell them. This will be easier for the kids because you don't want your child, if they're a white child, to be uncomfortable because you have a black friend, but you don't know what to say to your black friend because nothing has changed of that black friend always being put in a situation where he's being harmed for just being black. Definitely, definitely. What, uh, yeah. what about you, Matt? Um, I mean, I said, I try to tell them, but <laughs> they keep saying, well, where's the uproar when a white cop beats up on a white kid? I mean, like, y'all can go out there and do the same thing we're doing. I mean, yeah. Don't just sit That's back and look. I mean, everybody keeps saying, "Well, Black Lives Matter." They talk about Black people. No, we're talking about police brutality in general, right. not just for Black people, but for everyone. Right. I think that that's the misconception people are getting with, with Black Lives Matter. Like, like Nate said, Black people is pretty much the the symbol of police brutality, pretty much the focal point of being used for police brutality. They they're the only one getting caught with it. Right. No, definitely. Uh, Go ahead, comes, to, comes to a white person, um, who's there to do it? Come on, come on. Most of the time, they're by their self. Yeah, yeah. My thing is, and, and just to add on to that, if you if you want, if you want, and and I, I want to go back to your first part of that question was with the media. Would you tell someone that says the media is drawing all this up or making it worse or they're turning it in? The media can only broadcast something that was given creation to of content. There will be nothing to talk about in the media if that man didn't kneel on his neck for eight sec for eight minutes. Eight minutes forty nine seconds. Right. We cannot create that. You know what I'm saying? Like all all the media does is broadcast what's been happening. This wouldn't happen in the first place. You gotta look at the origin of everything. So if you yeah. feel like the media is making it worse, like you say, Greg, hey, Twitter, that's not the media. That's not Channel 5. That's not Channel nope. 7. This is people on their phones saying, look, this is what happened. The media wasn't the one to show the killing. 
Right. The media wasn't the one that showed Philandro Castro. The media didn't show none, even Rodney King. That was a someone that was a civilian that was recording on a camcorder back then. Mm-hmm. So now the media just going to show you. Now, if you want to believe the news and the media, hey, you're a smart person. You're right. You don't believe everything you see on the news. That's the Fox but, News. Right. Well, that's another story. That's another conversation. <laughs> okay. But the whole saying is you believe half of what you see. So right. everything is not an illusion. You see what's what's happening. I think that's why it's a different reaction this time because like you can't even argue. There's no, well, what if he didn't run? What if he didn't restrain? Now you see it. Yeah. I mean, he was handcuffed all against the wall. Like there was no resisting. There was no him running. There was no, oh, he's reaching for something. You know, you can't make that excuse with this guy. Um, I want to say though, my man out in New York, uh, the bird watcher. What was his name? You said um, the bird watcher. Yeah, the guy who um, recorded the girl same day. Oh, I, I never got the name. I know you're talking about the. But I mean, how, how how much do you think is a blessing to him that he's the opposite of this? Because. Because we know how the NYPD is. Mm-hmm. And if that could have went down and had the same outcome, but it didn't, it had the opposite effect. It affected her. But how lucky is him, is he is. Um, and I will also say, you know, with the other situations, you know, you talk about some other stuff, some other recordings you see. Um, I go back to the movie. Did you see Fruitvale Station? I can't watch it. I've seen it. I mean, the first five minutes is the actual footage of what happened in front of a crowded train. And that's scary. Like, to sit there and, you know, know that you're not doing anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. But because, what is it? Do, Do white officers just fear black men? Or is there is there some deeply rooted hatred that sometimes just bubbles up and it can cost an innocent man their life? That's why we had to do a better job of policing our own communities. Until they change the vetting process, until they change the prosecution bias between for black males and black females. Mm-hmm. Until that changes the bias of prosecution and legislation against us, until they change the background checks for the police officer, we have to police our communities the best way we can. So all these uh, gang members or affiliations, maybe you should revert killing each other and try policing certain things that happen in our community so we can call the police less until that happens. That way we can hold ourselves accountable or at least have a situation where we have pride in our communities to where our communities can take it more serious. Even though that shouldn't be on you, you know, you sworn into that badge, you put to protect and serve no matter what the poverty level is. But right. we know the reality to it. So at this point, if we're going to be in a situation like that, we got to try our best to police our communities because you can't come in Chinatown and act crazy like that. They're not going to allow it, but you can come to our communities all day because we don't have a strong foundation. We don't have that that aura in our communities where we can say, you know what, if you come in our community, you have to respect the civilians here. We don't have that. No, you're absolutely right. Um, and I'm I'm a, I'm I'm glad you brought that because I'm gonna bring you to a point and I'm gonna swing into another point. But I saw a comment on Facebook. This woman posted. And she said, maybe what should happen is hiring more black police officers and putting them in those black neighborhoods. I saw the same comment. What are your thoughts on that? No, nah, that's, that's, that's been tried and that's been tried. It doesn't always mean that it's true because mm-hmm. from my understanding, for certain people that expressed their experiences back in LA at that time, Mm-hmm. The black officers were the worst one, apparently. Yeah. You have some black officers that might not even view, just because you're black, just because you have the same skin doesn't mean you're kinfolk, as they like to say. Right. So yeah. we don't know how that black officer, we don't know their background. Just because they're black doesn't mean they feel the same thing. They might came from a middle class neighborhood or they might not face a certain amount of uh, justice. 
Like, look how and I'm not putting him, you know, under any fire. Look at Denzel Washington's comments when he, you know, he is he's like a no non excuse person. Right. I say he doesn't sympathize with us, but his perception is different. Mm-hmm. So just because you're a black officer, officer doesn't mean you can have that same perception. You might still look down on those black folks because they quote unquote dug to you or they're underperforming or underachieving in life. I don't think someone that looks like you is going to change anything. We just need someone to have a certain decency or be familiar with the culture. No, I agree. Um, I and you know it's funny you bring you brought up Denzel Washington because I'm thinking Training Day, how mm-hmm. he he lived in what was it called the Bottoms? Mm-hmm. He lived in the by his character lived in the Bottoms. You know, had it in with the Bloods there, and thought, well, I'm the cop here. You can do my bidding. Kill this white boy. You know, he was using his standing in the neighborhood for his own personal gain. And so, you know, I do think that's, I think with me, what I always felt was, regardless of their black and white, if you're a cop controlling that neighborhood and it's a black neighborhood, you need to sit down with the neighborhood leaders. You need to sit down with the community leaders, sit down with the youth, let them get to know you, let them get to trust you. Matt, what what did me and me, you spoke about on Twitter? Me and Matt actually talked about that on Twitter. I asked yeah. Matt, who are our leaders? Because yeah. it's yeah. one thing to have those action at restraint, but we still need a spokesperson. When yeah. you think about the Black Panthers, no matter how many chapters they had, you know who were the leaders, right? You knew it was right. a Fred Captain, there was a Bobby Seal. Like, you knew who the leaders were that spoke out, because not everybody has the same skill or approach things the same way. You know that with the nation domin nation domination, <laughs> nation of Islam. You know the nation of Islam. You had spokespersons. Yeah. Malcolm X was their spokesperson one time. Their assistant um, pastor, as they call it, because they still identify as a religious group. Mm-hmm. So that time there was an event with the nation of Islam with Malcolm X. There was a situation going on in Harlem when this guy was getting beaten, and he arrived to the station. I think, and you saw the spike leave with Malcolm X. They touched on that. Where yeah. they went up and say, "Look, we're not going anywhere." until we see this brother get medical attention. That's the same standpoint. So if you have a, a head of a chief of police, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. who are they going to go to? So if there's no leadership in that community, how can you kind of quarrel those tensions? Like That's um, why every community has to have their own leadership in some way, shape, or form. Like, okay, right. if you're coming into out, like how they say, the rappers get G-checked when they come into each other's city. I mm-hmm. think also, be G checked as well. Like, hey, if you're coming into the city, this is how we are. This is how we are. Mm-hmm. Right. So it has to be like a situation once you come in, we have this discussion. So anytime we're marching to the courthouse or marching to the police station, who is our spokesperson? Anybody can speak, but because the only downfall of social media, anyone can say Black Lives Matter, but there's no mission statement. There is not the same intention. Just like how you say it, Matt, when you say, hey, you ain't got a loot. Yeah, unfortunately, the person that might be breaking and they just want to get a free iPhone, they're going to tag Black mm-hmm. Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. We, didn't came there for, we didn't come there for that. That's the ugly part of it because there's no organization. The hashtag is cool, but they, everybody don't have the same part that's using the hashtag. Nope. Oh, that's very true. Um, like that, um, that sheriff, um, David Clark. Yeah. He he that's like he's pretty much Denzel Washington Trinity. He let yeah. the white guys do his bidding without him having fingerprints on it. That's right. that's how I feel about it. I don't know how anybody else didn't feel about it. No. But when no, he gets called right. out on it, he he quick he quick to see something about black people now. Yeah. Speaking of yeah. Denzel Washington, Greg, I have to ask you this since you brought you know why I brought him up and then you alluded to training day. What do you feel about his? He hasn't had any statements on this, but in the past, he has said, blame the system. Don't blame, the system's already raped. Blame the homes. Like, yeah, they get your homes right first. You think that's fair to say that our homes need to be in order before you blame the system? Um, I think if I looked at it, I kind of equated it to what you almost said. Like, 
when he says get your homes right, get your, get your leadership, get you know, come together, get your homes right. Hold on, right quick, y'all. Give me one second. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, man, how do you feel about that? Like in terms of, like I said, the leadership is important to me, but that's one thing that Denzel caught fire for years ago was saying it's yeah. not the system's fault. It's more so of there's lack of fatherhood or lack of whatever in the household. How did you feel about that? I mean, it, that's I can't say that may be the case because some guys are deadbeats and whatnot and everything, and some they some of them brought them on themselves and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. um, like I, that really can't be the case because, like I said, not all homes are broken. Mm-hmm. That's true, and that every broken home creates a product that's not productive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you some, know, some, so much, so much stronger. Right, because um, uh, and I feel sorry. I don't remember the name. The guy who got killed in his actual home by the police officer that walked into his his apartment thinking it was hers. No, um, no, I got name wrong. I can't think of his name. Right, but I know it's like Amber. Amber was the actual officer. Yeah. yeah. So my thing is, my thing is about that is. That has nothing to do with a lack of fatherhood or anything to do with homes. You know what I'm saying? So we just want accountability overall. Yeah. You know, like we just want overall accountability because even like I say, the police are the front lines. This is what I was alluding to. The police are the front line, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of them are doing this not only be some of them might not be racist or have hate in their heart. But I'm pretty sure behind the scenes, like, hey, don't worry about it. Administration will leave. He's not going to be charged or anything. You know why? Because right, by right. the time they get to jury, that's really the issue. Are they going to get convicted? Exactly. You already have a less than satisfactory charge. They say in third degree. Already, yeah. we're looking at like, okay, this is more than an officer. they just the front lines. Mm-hmm. What are we going to do for accountability? That's why we got to go in because – all those judges you vote in. Right, exactly. Had to get their track record. And that, that was the point I made earlier was it all puts and I think to your going back to your point about Denzel Washington, I think that's the point he's he's kind of making. If if I'm being devil's advocate for Denzel Washington, putting your homes in order, get your homes in order. I don't see him as, hey, you need to get your life in order. I see it as, hey, we need to get our communities in order strengthen our communities and that way we that's how you change the system right you know one person doesn't change you know doesn't change the world it takes a group you know public enemy said it it takes a na- it takes a nation of millions to hold us back or it takes a nation to hold us back somebody like but, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah but they're going to that, my community right now too yeah because um but my first my first grade teacher She's mm-hmm. a big Trump supporter. Big. Uh, yeah. So, and, and I mean, I don't know. They, they're starting a war with her right now and whatnot, I guess, because she's, she's one of those should, shouldn't resist shouldn't resist people. Mm-hmm. And everything, everybody's like, well, you, you, taught, you taught us all our, all our kids and everything, and this is how you, and he, she goes back on, oh, well, I got a black friends thing and whatnot, but. I mean, yeah, you live in our community, but <laughs> and, and that's and that's another aspect as well. This is not a political situation. This is a humanity situation. That has nothing to do with political. And I don't know why people use that as their ammunition, because they're really falling along to what the president says. And it's like, brothers, don't worry about the president. This is humanity. This is a civil. No matter who the president is, this has always been a problem. Yeah. Right. And in terms of the whole black friends thing, we definitely talk about that in this channel because that is a common misconception. Just because we're friends, that means you think you have the right to speak on my struggle. Exactly. No. And I, and I'm not a trophy, you know. Like mm-hmm. I know, don't, don't hold me as in that token black friend. We don't yeah. want that. We never cared for that. And even if you do have friends who I let you say the n word around them, or you feel very comfortable. I understand that that doesn't mean that that person knows the culture. Right. I know I, I, I got a, I got a white friend. I love him to death. He's like a brother to me. He's one of the most country guys you'll ever meet. Like he loves going to NASCAR races, all that. 
But whenever he listens to a rap song, he not he not once says the N-word. And I asked him one day, I was like, you know, why are you always believe it out? He's like, man, because that's not my place to ever say that. I should never have a reason to say that, whether I like the song or not. I just know not to say it. And I respected him for the answer for that. That should be the answer. Like, you know, I wasn't, me personally, I wasn't going to get mad if you said it in a song, but he took it upon himself and put it in his mind that he was not going to say that. And I can respect that. Um, but there are people who do like to say the N word, mm-hmm. especially on the internet. So I'm going to make this a little bit lighthearted because I found this hilarious. What do y'all think about the people who are getting called out in these Facebook chats, these tweets, and getting all their information exposed, and people are sharing it across the web, and these people are getting fired for it? Like Twitter works fast. Yeah. Before I respond, um, am I allowed to curse? Yes. Okay, fuck those people. So um, <laughs> at the end of the day, I don't, I don't feel... I know you're not asking I feel bad for them. Yeah. It shows us in society that we treat social media like this diary in a mm-hmm. journal. Even though our diary and journal is meant to be private initially, that old animation show, Doug, Doug didn't let that journal be for <laughs> everybody. You know? That was right. his personal thoughts and concerns. It still kills me that people are putting things up and feel like it cannot be shared and it cannot come back to bite them. That shows you that it's a knee-jerk reaction to tweet how you feel or to post what you feel. So those people that's getting caught up like that, I think they're idiots. And I think that they're in this social media addiction. And I think part of it too is, you know how it goes with social media. Even though you might have a negative reaction, you might have positive reactions too. So you're trying to rile up the people that are going to basically go for bat for you. So it's like, oh, I'm going to say this. And I know I got people that support me, right? Or you're just used to having a big friends list, but you're only used to people that just think like you. And you have no that. idea that you probably offended and hurt people of other culture that you initially cool with. I remember when Obama became president, so many people I was cool with and had respect for, there was tension created because now it went from we all cool, we all listen to different music to now racial tensions at an all time high because right. some people have no idea that they're biased until it happens to them. I really do think there are some white families who have no idea that they have prejudiced thoughts until their child dates a black person. Because yeah. now yeah. it's in their face. They probably didn't know. They're like, I don't think I'm racist. I never did anything. I never said anything. But now when it's, you have to deal with it, that person could be part of your family. You might have a grandchild that might be mixed. How do you feel now? And it brings out the ugliness. And right. I think what it is, social media, it hides that chain. Because you can say something crazy. Your friends can check you on it. But if you're in social media, you're going to have another dumbass that's going to support you and share it. No, I agree. Um. And because, you know, I have a biracial daughter and, you know, one of the things when, you know, her being born was I was wondering, you know, what happens next? You know, how's it going to be with her family and me? How are they going to view her? And they love her. They love me. They show me, they treat me with the most utmost respect. And I'm lucky because I know that's not the case. Mm -hmm. A lot of black men who are in in interracial relationships. So I know I'm fortunate, but, you know, it's, it was one of those things that was in the back of my mind, like, okay, what's going to happen? And, you know, are they going to talk behind my back? Are they going to treat me, you know, cast me on the outside? Are they going to treat my daughter like shit? You know, that's things I wonder about. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough they have it. They love me and her as if they know us for years, as if, as if we're, well, they're blood, they're hurt, but they treat me like I'm blood as well. Yeah, because it could have been a guess who movie. It could have been a guess who movie, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, right. Need to, your, to your point, um, I got a black black guy to work with. He said he watched the um, George Floyd video. Mm-hmm. He, said, he said he don't see what's the outcry about it. Black guy, no. Oh, yeah, you, you, you have that. You have those people mm-hmm. who... Don't get it. Who's like? Yeah, I don't you see. You see it from the other side. He's 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 he's, 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 he's I mean, I won't say it was. He's in. 
niggas die every every, every day. Be like he said like that. Excuse my language, but yeah, that what he said. And and we we now I guess my my thing is Matt is he viewing it because he's just so desensitized to it, or does he, he just he he grew up in, he grew up in um and was it Stockton, Stockton, California. So okay. he, he 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 sees it a lot. So, so to me, that's some that's that's another thing. It's he saw it a lot, so but do, people do you people just accept it and, to the point that you just get so used to it, you just become numb to it? Yeah, he's a Trump supporter too, so what? what that's beyond the point. But. But, but you know what though? As as crazy as it sounds, we need people like him. Let me let me tell you why. We have to show people that black people are not a monolith. Right. We all don't think alike. We all don't view things the same. So in a yeah. random in a random roundabout way, we actually need that. We yeah. need like the Stacy Dashes in the world. Cause you know what? Sometimes our stereotype is what put us in these situations unfairly. Because they're looking at a lot of these black comedians that they're all these trade secrets of how we do in black households and made it public. So right. now you see these white audiences like, oh, I think I know black people because they always joke about this. They always talk about this. It must be true. So I, I'm glad we have people like Matt's friend. Or Pat, or I don't know if he's a friend or someone Matt just works with. I'm glad we have people like that. I'm glad we have the Stacey Dashes. I'm glad we have Black Republicans. I'm glad we have that because there's different shades of us. So now we got that out the way. Everybody ain't tripping. This is about humanity. This ain't about race. This is about humanity, first and foremost. Right. No, I agree. Um, just like the shades of our skin, you know, black people, to your point, Nate, black people are all different. We all think differently. Um, I think it's very clear when you look at this presidential election, you know, we, you think, you know, I think Joe Biden in a weird way said it best, but I think it shows where we need to change. Mm -hmm. If you're for Trump, you ain't black. Which isn't true. He's going. He's going to get a, a black VP, black woman. Watch. Yeah. It'll be in his best interest, but he. <laughs> I don't want to do it for the wrong reason, but he is. No, but that's smart. That's all. That's all politics is: is a strategy. And um, when you, when you think about that aspect of it, um, he's that comfortable with black people. That's why he felt the need to say that. Yeah. He's that comfortable. I knew he was going to clean up on himself. I've literally watched all but one Democratic debate. I've been very in tune with the, the political race that's come around. He has swarmed the older black demographic. Mm -hmm. He has those votes automatic. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, when you, when you think about that and what he said, our problem with what he said, is that to why to say it earlier? We all don't think alike. You making it worse for the younger generation because you you okay. You're like you're like them. You're not Trump, but you think all black people are the same too. For you to say that, yeah. Yeah, all the all the black conservatives ran away with that. You ain't black. We with black quote right. They ran I mean, straight to, through the mud with it. Yeah, Kansas and I mean, that, the first one. He <laughs> ran that thing into the ground. Yeah. And, and that's that's sad because the truth is there are some good black Republicans that you, they think a different way. I mean, history shown as much as we sit there and think that the Democrats are on our side, history shown that they haven't been. I mean, no. hell, you had the Dixiecrats in the 60s mm -hmm. that no. supported, you know, that didn't support segre uh, that supported segregation. Dem democracy only became an ally to black people because they were anti-establishment and at, after a while black people became anti-establishment. It was just convenient right. for democracy. That's all. And in terms of black on black situations, that been going on even like in past times. Mm -hmm. you know, and let's, let's be honest, if it wasn't in the United States, we would have been feuding over other black people based on tribes, not skin. Right. Yep. Like in Mexico, they are in the Mexican wars, they have had assassinations on their presidents because that particular 
tribe, well not tribe, but that particular group of people was contending against that group of people and they had their own racism because they were a little bit darker. They all Mexicans, but they were darker and there was tension because of that. Yeah. But, um, um uh, yeah, like, I like, mean, like, I, I, I try to watch some black conservatives, but like, it's like, it's just crazy because, because Candace, I can't, I, I can't stand Candace Owens. I just can't. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to trying to listen there. I just can't. Hodge twins, I th- I, I, don't, I don't know if they're pandering or they're trolling. Who, the whole, who are you talking Hodge, about? Hodge twins. Oh, I don't. I honestly don't know much about them, so I haven't really I, seen them speak. The last video I saw of them, they talk about the, um the Audrey keys. The, the first thing they say, well, when 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 do you see a black man? When do you see, when do you see a black man go jogging? Like really. But people do go jogging. Yeah, they seen it rolling all the time. That so must be. I think they are trolling. That. Yeah, they 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 they, 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 I don't, they they back and forth with it. Like, but I don't too much pay pay on the mind. Um, like I said, Candace Owens. I I I I try to go mine with her, but some things I can't I can't see. Yeah, and honestly, and I was gonna I wasn't even gonna bring this up, but I always felt like ideally. This country would be in the right track if we just eliminate that party system. The party yeah. system is what got us messed up because it's really a game of high school. It's yeah. like I'm representing my clique and you represent yours. And I think I don't agree with Diddy on a lot of things outside of music, but one thing I agree with that he said was the Democrats have to earn basically our vote this time. We can't just give it to them. And fortunately, because we have such a huge um, obstacle, a huge manipulator and instigator of racism in the office it's like we want to be on that time but we can't afford to be divided on this time either because he's up for re-election you know what i'm saying so i really think they're going to they're going to they're going to swarm the polls to try to keep them in right and this makes it even more tricky with the pandemic you know with going to the polls i heard some states are trying to Manipulate, not manipulate, but try to create like an electronic situation to see if they can do votes that way. And we already had an issue of hacking with Russia, so I can imagine mm-hmm. a, a, an electric voting standpoint that's gonna be worse. Yeah, because I'm like, I don't, I don't know. It, it's like seeing the way absentee ballots. I don't too much trust those because those gotta get mailed in. I never did either. Whatnot. But I mean. All right, sorry about that, y'all. I'm back. Sure. Yeah, but all we were all we were speaking about is um I made a point that I, I, I think um well first Matt gave us this pleasure, it's a different like Candace Owens and them. But mm-hmm. I was basically saying ideally I think that this country will never really get to the right track until we eliminate the party system as a whole. Because it's making us choose sides. And sometimes the side that we choose, the majority of us will be Democrats. They're not necessarily giving us what we want or what we need. And I, I truly believe that until that, that party system is over, it's going to be a game of high school. And I, I basically said to Matt, I feel what data was coming from, where the Democrats have to earn our votes. But at the same time, that's true. But because we have such a huge instigator of bigotry and racism and corruption in the White House, we can't afford to do that now. That's how bad it is because we have this two-party system. It's Republicans and Democrats. No one talks about the Green Party or Independent because we have been trained in our head. I'm sure you Mm -hmm. all tested as well. We've been trained in our head to vote Democrat. I remember back in school, they had a little um, I don't want to call it a play thing. We used to go and vote. You know, yeah. our votes didn't really count. But as kids, they, they took us up there. And my mom would right. help me. She said, remember to vote Democrat now? Like, she would say that to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my mom too. No, no, I, I, know, I know some older black folks who all the time tell me, hey, make sure you vote Democrat, make sure you vote Democrat. And I'm like, what if I don't agree with their policies? Don't mm-hmm. matter. If you see a D next to it, you hit, you hit the check mark. Yep. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to wrap up here, but, you know, just want to get some final thoughts from everyone. Uh, Matt, I'll start with you. Just final thoughts about, you know, what's going on. And do you think we can overcome this? Do you think there's still a lot of work to be done? There's still a lot of work to be done. Like I told you, it's going to be a, a, a never-ending cycle. Yeah. 
it's, just, it's, it's gonna be pretty much a one a, a one up. It's gonna it's gonna happen again. I don't know when. I don't know where. Mm-hmm. It's, it's gonna happen again. To the point there to where. I don't, I don't want to get secret service calling me, but to the point the White House is going to get burned down. <laughs> we'll see. They're going, they're we'll going see. to end up storming the gates and burn the White House down. We'll see, man. We'll see. What about you, Nate? Say. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, because um, like I said, people, people's tired. People's yeah. Tired, man. What about you, Nate? Hmm. Call me a weird optimist. I think this is one of the moments where we're going to have a revolution. I think this this feels a little different this time. I think that in a situation, I just want you to hear this too. Um, I'm sorry, that was my uh, fiance in the background. Say hi, say hi, come in, come in real quick. Come in real quick. Say hi to Greg and Matt. Hi, you Hi. Hey, Tiffany. <laughs> How's everything? All right, we're good. <laughs> so back to my final thoughts. Um, I do feel like, in terms of a, a I think this is going to be a revolution. Yeah. I think that based on how the reactions are, people are tired of being oppressed. Twenty twenty has been a hell of a year. Yeah. It's going to be a purge of some sort, whether good or bad. It's going to be some changes. What do I see in the foreseeable future? It's going to be ugly before it gets pretty again. But I truly believe, just like the Emancipation Proclamation was instigated through uprisings from Harriet Tubman to John Brown. All that instigation created a situation where they had to liberate slaves because the slaves became too much of a problem. Once we stop being slaves in a way of thinking that we cannot be effective, that's when they'll change. And finally, I think we've reached that point. We're not, not gonna do more than just talk about it and hashtag. We have allies in all cultures now. So countries. <laughs> Call me a slight yeah. optimist. People in Berlin are protesting because of us too. Mm-hmm. This is a change. This is a wave. How are we going? We might lose more soldiers throughout that process, but I think this is going to be the first nail in the coffin of the system. It might not be in our lifetime, but people are going to talk about this moment. All right. All right. Um, just my final thoughts. That was good, both you guys. My final thoughts on the whole thing is, j- just like with you, Nate, I do have I do have some optimism. Um, you know, right now we're in the dark, and I don't know where the end of the, the end of the tunnel where I can see the light is going to be. And maybe when I'm a decrepit old man, it may be in a couple of months. Who knows? But we have to not only strengthen ourselves mentally, but we got to strengthen our communities. We have to hold each other down, but also lift each other up, take care of each other. So that way we won't lose, you know, not only a George Floyd, but an an Armand Arbery, uh, you know, Sandra Bland, countless other Orlando uh, Castile you know at the end of the day one of the things that I always looked at is and I always thought is what if it was a big name that this happened to not that I would ever want this to happen to a big name but imagine if this happened to a LeBron James Hollywood been burned out right now and Cleveland been on fire. Exactly. And I just think, you know, what what is it going to take for the country to wake up and see, hey, this is a systematic problem that needs to be stopped. You know, the same way that you had the Me Too movement, you know, the Time's Up movement. We have we have to be able to sit there and say, hey, enough is enough. End the shit now. And Hopefully these protests and riots will be a start, but I don't want this to be like Ferguson where we protest for a couple of days and then it's over. Like we have to get that message across. We have to. Randy Orton hashtag black lives matter is serious. Not only that, but when someone responded and he broke it down, why he said it, that's what I need. 
Yeah. I don't I don't just need you to sit there and say hashtag Black Lives Matter if you're if you're a white celebrity. If someone questions you on it, I need you to come back and say, hey, this is exactly why I said it. If you don't like it, unfollow me and right. own it. Say, hey, if I'm gonna lose followers because of this, then I'm gonna lose followers. Right. And to add to that, Greg, in closing, on my part as well, mm-hmm. for anyone that feels in despair or feel a little bit of hopeless, think about it. One of the best things that's happened, particularly for black people, happened after something tragic. Black Wall Street came because of segregation. Yeah. We can we can definitely be in a situation where we can be the victors of this. Yeah. But in this time of tragedy, we have to use what we cannot depend on to build for ourselves. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So with that being said, I want to thank my guest. Uh, Matt, where can the good people find you at? I don't post too much, but y'all can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DJ Darkness 810 that's why I'm say, at. say the name <laughs> one more time, Matt, please. <laughs> <laughs> like Biggie said, I don't need your follows. <laughs> <I'm there>. All <laughs> right. Uh, and Nate, where can the good people find you at? Uh, you can follow me in IG, G underscore signature. Also at Twitter at G signature 843, Snapchat G signature. I usually don't be on Facebook, but you can send me on Messenger because I just do not have time for the BS. All right. And last but not least, this is your host, G, for Blurred Lines. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Blurred Lines 2020, I believe, or just at Blurred Lines, you'll find us. Uh, you know, follow, you know, in with the video, like it, comment on it. I would definitely love to have this conversation, not only with, you know, Black people, but a people of all races, all colors, you know, let's get the conversation going. That's another thing. We cannot be afraid to talk to each other about what's going on. Um, With that being said, you all stay safe out there and I'll see you next time.